Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to Man vs. Film, and it is time for another Netflix original. Something that can really terrify you, sometimes slightly excite you, because you're never really too sure what you're going to get. This movie, The Outlaw King, is directed by David McKenzie, the man that brought us Hell or High Water, and a slew of other fantastic movies as well. And it stars Christopher Pine as Robert the Bruce. Now, being Scottish myself, this is a tale that I'm very familiar with. It's taught in schools, and it's one that you just grew up learning all about. It's all around you and the movie does hit most of the beats, the, the tale as it is. Now of course the Hollywood eyes certain aspects of it uh, by putting in these personal moments that may or may not have existed. The basic story is a David and Goliath story. After the, the Scotland had raised an army and fought the English they lost, William Wallace lost and this is, takes place directly after that where Robert the Bruce becomes an outlaw uh, placed that way by the king and he tries to rouse an army, a resistance to again fight back against the English, this time with a different result. Now we have Christopher Pine as Robert the Bruce, a man who is kind of subjugated at the start, his father has capitulated against uh, the, the king, you know they the, the, the tried the resistance, it didn't work, they're now having to go uh, and bow at his feet and throw themselves at his mercy. And to some extent he does become kind of merciful but Robert starts to see things and the, and the people and the way the English are acting there that starts to grate on him, starts to feel not right and he wants to take back his country. That's how he goes about doing that to an extent. Now the production standards are pretty good. Uh, this is a bit of a personal bias but I think a lot of the locales in Scotland are stunning to look at and there is some stunning in imagery here as well. It's all about the characters and it's how you got on with the characters and I felt that Christopher Pine was pretty good as Robert the Bruce. His accent comes and goes in little, little bits but more often than not was pretty well done and pretty spot on. I quite enjoyed that aspect. It's something you always listen out for when you hear your own accent um, in a movie. And his performance is a kind of stoic one at the start, a rousing one later on as it is a man who is put upon and pressures put upon him, who tries and tries, is constantly told that he will never achieve what he wants to achieve and ultimately it's his story from getting there and achieving what everybody says he cannot do, uniting Scotland and, and sort of ridding the place of the English. Now, the English in this are quite vilified as, you know, the extreme bad guys. There's no duality there whatsoever. These are the horrible people doing despicable and horrible things that have to um, be stopped. You know, they've came into Scotland, they've just kind of took over and, you know, it's, they're doing horrible things to the people, overtaxing them and just kind of putting them down and it's all, you know, national pride, Scottish power, get them out. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's quite fun. It's, it's a Hollywoodized version because you have these people who are nothing but evil archetypes, you know, people that must be stopped. So it gives our hero and his clan, the people he pulls together, a, a kind of purpose and evil to rally against. And it is very much like several other movies, you know, it's a man getting his team together to achieve a goal. I've seen it done lots before and it's hard to tell whether this movie is exceptional or just running the mill. I am extremely biased when it comes to this movie. I enjoyed it a lot. I know it's not quite perfect because there were some points that just let it down, but mostly it was pretty on the nose for me. It was pretty enjoyable. I loved the production standards. I loved the, the costuming. I loved the, the, the dialogue and, and, and the characters that came together and the situations that had to happen. It is, however, a little bit of a slow paced movie. You know, there is some moment, fleeting moments of action, but then there's long periods of, of people at unrest, getting ready to fight, training montages. It's got montages, it does have one training montage at one point, and just getting ready for the next skirmish. And there aren't too many throughout the movie. The movie is all about ramping up towards that final battle, which is truly fantastic, and it is a real spectacle in the movie. I was expecting there to be not a lot of, of people, or not to feel as frenetic as you would expect one of these war scenes to be, but it does. It goes for it. It's lavishly shot. It looks down and gritty and grimy. It is bloodthirsty. There is just death all around and it is a visceral sight that has to really be seen. I kind of liked Outlaw King. I did. And uh, <laughs> like I said, I am biased towards a story because it's a story I have grew up with. I would love to know someone else's opinion, someone who's not from here, tell me what they liked about the movie and what they didn't. Most of the things worked for me. 
I liked the characters, I liked the, the, the relationship between you know Robert and his wife uh, and how that's kind of a relationship is forced together and he is aware of the situation that you know she's been kind of forced to him and, and, and is kind of wary of how she feels as well. It, it's probably something that's a little bit you know added in for effect but it works tremendously well and, and gives you these two characters that you like in a relationship that you have that you're wary that you know specifically one of them could possibly have something nefarious done to her by these terrible villainous people. I had a great deal of fun without Lockin. I thought it was uh, really well shot. I thought it looked great. I loved the score. I loved some of the bigger battle sequences. I loved the look of the castles and, and the dialogue and just the camaraderie around the people who are at the lowest of the low but trying to get back. A lot of fun for me. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on the movie, so let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man Vs Film.